And Paris, if you continue to let everyone in for me, please. Yep, we'll do. Thank you. So hi everyone and thank you for joining us this evening. This evening's webinar is all about using technology to support Rose and Shine principles with particularly the daily and weekly reviews and checking understanding in the secondary classroom. Um, my name is Gemma Gullam and I'm an educational technologist at United Learning. I've been with a team since January, but before that I was working in schools within United Learning and across Asia. I've just seen that someone's asked to unmute. I will switch that feature off now for you. Um, this programme has been offered as part of the DSP programme. That means that we've been able to give support to schools across the whole of the UK with their ed tech needs. Now, the programme is going to start again after Easter, but more details will be available for that soon. I'm just switching on the unmute. And there we go. So phase two is coming soon. That will be launched in April. So what we have done this evening is we have asked you to mute your mics and use the chat for questions. We will, if you have any questions, we'll try and answer them as soon as we can. But if not, we try and put them together in an FAQ sheet to answer those for you. So the plan for this evening. Um, this evening's webinar is all about understanding how technology can enhance and transform teaching and learning. And we're going to look at doing this by gaining an insight into the Rose and Shine principles of instruction, which I've had experience of using within the school and supporting schools with um, during the EdTech programme. We're going to look at exploring how technology can support daily and weekly reviews, exploring how they can be used to check students' understanding and building a bank of skills and tools that can be used within the blended classroom. So the Rose and Shine principles of instruction. These are based on four main strands, reviewing material, questioning, sequencing concepts and then stages of practice. And this is something that's becoming more and more popular within teaching and learning policies across the UK and even globally. So the first one we're going to be looking at today is daily reviews and daily reviews about that five to eight minutes of previously covered material. You're looking for that instant recall. It could be multiple choice questions. It's about ensuring that you've got those plausible answers with misconceptions and it's about high frequency and low stakes. So as I'm showing some of the technology tools we can use this evening, think about how you make links with the previous lesson. Were there any misconceptions that needed addressing before you're moving the learning on? A second of the principles we're looking at this evening is the weekly and monthly reviews and research finds that material that's not adequately practiced is easily forgotten. And this is something that I've had experience with before I started using the principles. My children in my class were not able to instantly recall the information and we spent a long time having to go back over it. Whereas since using weekly and monthly reviews in my practice every single week, the children are definitely knowing more and remembering more. So as we're looking at this, think about how you enable recall and do you refresh on those core concepts the skills and the important thresholds throughout the year. Do you think about where the children have come from and where they're going to? And then finally, we're going to be looking at checking student understanding. So this isn't always about asking those like, are you ready to move on yet? Or do you understand questions? It could be about the hinge point. It could be about summarising. And it could be about asking pupils to think aloud and talk through those processes. It's thinking about how do you know they're good with moving on to the next step of learning, which is where the technology aspect comes in. So I've broken this down into two sections. The first section, I'm going to talk about the tools that I use regularly and I found to be most useful. Then I am going to share some others with you, which do link to these three Rose and Shine principles, but can also be used within the blended classroom or if a bubble went down, you'll be able to use those again as well so that technology continues to be used to enhance teaching and learning in the classroom. So the first tool that I like to use is Microsoft Forms and I can see today that there's quite a few people from my Forms webinar a few weeks back and Forms is available free within your 365 platform. You'll find it when you click your waffle and it's here and the one that you want to be using is New Quiz. 
When you create a quiz, it's brilliant because you can put a key question with the use of an image to support. You can anticipate and address misconceptions through the feedback option. So here we can see that actually the correct answer was Africa, but you can anticipate that the children might choose Asia because it's darker. You can also add custom navigation and routes for your quiz using branching. So I know that when I was speaking to some of my secondary colleagues who teach maths, after they've done their input, they then check the students' understanding. They can choose whether or not they go to a hot, a spicy or a mild activity. With forms, you can also preview what it would look like, both on a computer, but also on a mobile device. Now, where I come from in Portsmouth, a lot of our students have been using mobile devices to then access their learning. If you have the quiz, and particularly when we're back in the classroom, then you'll be able to see what the children will view when they're completing your quiz. And it shows them at the end the feedback that they got. So it's an instant feedback to the pupils in your class. With forms as well, you also get all the responses at once and the responses can be viewed, viewed as an image. So I can see here that actually when I was checking my students understanding, only 13% got the question right. So this is going to be a, an, an area that I will need to address again. You can also go pupil by pupil. So for this one, I can see that actually. This student took two minutes to complete their quiz, but then their answers were things like not sure, sorry. So I will need to speak to this child and just see actually is there anything else I can do to, uh, to support them? Perhaps they may want to redo their quiz. There we go. Oh, I've just seen in the chat that some people have. OK, thank you, James, for looking at that. OK, going back to forms, as well as being able to collect the responses, you can have the graphs and you can have the individual answers. You can download the results in form, um, in an Excel. What I particularly like about this when I'm checking students understanding is to then use it to group them together, perhaps for intervention work, perhaps to then continue to address those misconceptions and to even inform my planning. So Microsoft Forms is a brilliant way to embed Road and Shine principles into your day to day practice. They could be self marking for quick and efficient feedback. There's no sign in on Microsoft account necessary. So what you can do is you can create these forms and then turn them into QR codes or embed them into your website and the children don't need to log in to be able to access them. They're web and mobile friendly and you don't need to download an app. One of my particular favourite tools with all of the 365 products is that it's got the immersive reader. There's no paper, no printing and no lost work. So it's not like, oh, miss, I forgot to bring my, or sir, I forgot to bring my quiz in today. It's there, it's instant for you. You can track who's responding to the quiz tasks, but that's only if you've done it by they have to log in to access it. You can export your quiz scores to Excel for analysis. They can be used in the assignment workflow in class teams. You can even add quizzes as polls during live lessons. So if you did have some children isolating at home or if when we return next week, a bubble was to close, you can continue to use this method to check understanding with your class. You can share through Teams QR codes. You can email, you can embed. For example, here's one. Here, someone put an end of unit quiz at the end so that they can retest themselves if needs be and you can add to class notebook. The reason I put Google Forms on here is although I don't use Google Forms anymore in my current practice, I have been able to achieve all of this through Google Forms as well. And down here when you receive the slides, if you click on this link, it will take you to the forms webinar if you needed any more information. So the next method I'm going to look at today for checking understanding and weekly and monthly reviews is class notebook. So what I started off with to check my students understanding. I had an activity look like this from their science questions or in English. I also had they had to watch a video and then pay attention to the moments and jot them down. Now this information could have gone anywhere. Instead, by using class notebook within Teams, I am then able to check the students understanding one by one. So they've all got their own 
section and within their section, I was able to drop in the questions. I could then click on review student work and I'm able to see instantly and go to direct page to check their understanding. Similarly, you can use it for your weekly and monthly reviews by popping in your vocabulary. So this is an example of an English one that I did. I put the vocabulary here and then the children were able to check their understanding with their weekly and monthly review by filling in a form. So the form was then added and embedded into the notebook and I'm able to instantly collect that information. I can use it with my class working in the classroom or when they're working at home. You can check each people's work and see when they've completed it. And you can do this during live lessons. You could be using it as a model. Again, instead of getting the children to then share their work, you can put it up on the screen and then you'll be able to talk about it with them. You can give audio feedback, so verbal feedback. And you can also use quick stickers if you wanted to. It's instant and you can address those misconceptions straight away. With Class Notebook, it's great because again, it's web and mobile friendly and there are apps available. It's got an inbuilt immersive reader. Again, no paper, no printing and no lost work. And it's instant. What I particularly preferred about Class Notebook is the ease of annotating images and documents. You can upload, copy and paste worksheets or learning activities, including the PDFs. And you can embed those videos and quizzes. Using the dictation and immersive reader option makes it available for and it means that all children can access it. And you can give that verbal and written feedback. As well as also having that collaboration feature for in class. If you're thinking about that checking student understanding at those precious hinge points moments, then share the screen, share the class notebook, use the collaboration space so that everyone can take part and you can begin to see whether or not the class are ready to move on, as opposed to saying any questions or are you ready? Down here, I've included the class notebook creation link to one of our sessions in case anybody needs to support with this. And then finally, one thing that I did with one of my colleagues is that you can duplicate it year after year. So once you've made your teaching resource, you can reuse it again and again to continue for each of your different cohorts coming through. And it's a brilliant revision tool and log. Paris, have you had any questions so far? Not yet, no. Brilliant, thank you Paris. Okay, so the first method I'm gonna to share today is Kahoot, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, but I'm gonna talk more again. Oh yeah, sorry Ms. Costa, you'll get the link afterwards. I will share the class notebook creation link with you after this webinar. Um, with the Kahoot, I'm going to show you how it can actually work for daily reviews, weekly and monthly reviews and the check-in understanding. And this is what we have to be careful about with the Rose and Shine principles and technology is that there's so many amazing pieces of technology out there, but it's about really making sure that we're clear on how these work together. So Kahoot, for those of you that aren't familiar, is a quiz tool. Now, the great thing about Kahoot at the moment is that it's got two options. So you can use it for virtual classrooms as well as self-paced learning, which means that if you have got students at home isolating or if you've gone back to the blended classroom, they can still take part two. Now, with the Kahoot, you can put in your questions and once they've completed the quiz, you're then able to see how many students got it correct. So I can see on here that the most difficult question, perhaps at my hinge point, that I need to then readdress those misconceptions, would be the basic definition of a preposition. I could see that actually this specific child needed more help. And actually there's two children that didn't finish, so I will be looking to support them. At the end of it, it does give you a little um, round of applause podium so if you're playing this in class and even with children, uh, students that are at home, it does still bring all the data together and it's a fun element, which particularly my Key Stage 3 pupils really enjoyed. Now, the great thing about Kahoot is that there's no signing for pupils to take part. It's a free account for teachers, but do check before you use any of these that are outside the 365 platform that your DPIA is in place for this. And I've included the link at the end of this session for you. It's web and mobile friendly. There's no paper, no printing, and no lost work. 
And that real time in the classroom and virtually is something that it means that everyone can be included. You can schedule your quizzes if you wish. And there are ready made quizzes, although I've often found there to be a few errors. And I've just seen that someone's put that Kahoot now integrates with Teams, which is fantastic. And pupils can actually make their own quizzes. So if you go back to that um, weekly and monthly review, it might be actually that some of the students have created their own quizzes for you to then go on and use to support other classes um, with checking their own understanding and those monthly reviews. And again, you can give the detailed feedback. Now, the fourth option I'm going to share today is Plickers. Before I do that, I've just seen there's a question. So it says, how do people use Kahoot in lessons? Our students don't have mobiles and we don't have tablets. OK, so I've only been able to do this by having children bringing devices into class or we've used some of the Chromebooks that we've had. If anyone does have an example of how they've used that, please pop that in the chat box and we can revisit it after this session. So method four, plickers. Um, I particularly like plickers again with my key stage three pupils, although I've had key stage four and key stage five enjoy these as well, because they're all given a unique card and they get to turn their card around to see which answer they think it is. It's great for the weekly and monthly review aspect because instead of having a worksheet they have to fill in, it's instant. They're able to then, you put the statements into the plicker program, and you can bulk copy and paste. So if you've already got a quiz ready, you can import it into the Plicker quiz. And then each pupil is given a Plicker that looks like this. And they turn it around. So you can see you've got A, B, C or D. Now, each pupil's Plicker is different. So they can't actually look at each other's and see by the shape which one their peer is holding up. The teacher then scans the room with an Android app or with an Apple app and it picks up all of the data instantly. So that means that it encourages participation. It means that each pupil has their own plicker, so it belongs to them. But a little tip there is do make sure you label them and perhaps laminate them, because I did have my TA kindly collect them all in for me and they weren't missing. Um, it's instant feedback. Again, no paper printing or lost work. I think you can see my common theme here and you can import options from pre-made quizzes so that's a lot of time saving on workloads but it means that you're beginning to get that technology in and as someone on the chat just said it's a great tool going back to the Kahoot bit if they don't have devices in the classroom having a plicker in front of them is great for their weekly and monthly reviews and it does save time it's real time so you get the scores up on the screen and it's free now one of the things that I would say with Plickers is do be careful looking at the time that it takes to create the quiz and the same as with the hoop. Is that the same output you're going to get in the lesson? So do weigh up whether or not your daily or weekly reviews and your recaps are the time uh, compared to the time spent you creating this. And <laughs> I've just seen we've got a very keen Plicker fan here. I'm glad I've included this one today. Um, yes, with the laminating, sometimes it doesn't pick it up. It's I've generally not had that problem, but I have had some people do. And yes, it can be played now online with pupils at home and in school. So it is a really great way to get that use of technology without them having a device in front of them. OK, so another <laughs> of my favourite methods to use is an interactive whiteboard and there are many, many different whiteboards out there and they allow every student to have their own virtual mini whiteboard, which for if you're thinking about your key stage three pupils that have come from primary, they're all used to having their own individual whiteboards. And um, from my experience of working in secondary, my secondaries didn't have their own whiteboards. Where perhaps if we've used an interactive whiteboard, it means that you can quickly check that understanding across the whole class and identify any misconceptions oh, and deal with them straight away. Um, with whiteboard.fi, it is a paid subscription. And again, you do need to check you've got your DPIA in place. But basically, you're able to then send out. So here's a white rose math example. And I was able to push that out to all the pupils. 
I was then able to see instantly them writing on their interactive whiteboard, on their device, on their computer, whatever they were using, and then they come straight through to the screen. You can also save the work. And that's one of the things that I really liked about whiteboard.fi is that when I was in the classroom and they were using their whiteboard, they're very quickly able to wipe everything off. But actually, by doing it on whiteboard.fi, I'm able to download what they've put on their whiteboard and can use it as additional evidence as well. So I'm just checking and seeing. So we've got another tip there. You can also stick the plicker cards on the back of a student books and that works really well. And yes, a matte finished laminate, although they can be a little bit more expensive, they are better. If you're trying to scan and for QR codes. So there are lots of other tools available that I am going to go through as well. And again, these link back to the daily reviews, the weekly and monthly reviews and check and student understanding. So one of these is Sway. Again, Sway can be found by going through your Office 365 um, waffle and you can create a new blank Sway. Now, what I like about Sway is that quick daily review. And it might be actually that as pupils are arriving and it may be that you've got staggered starts, you can have the information that you want them to complete on a Sway. And instead of having a recap on the board like this, what do you remember from your last lesson, get them to use what they've learned to answer these questions. So it means that they're able to work independently. It means that every single student in your class is participating in that daily in that daily review and then they can self check and correct and feedback. Particularly good again thinking about the blended classroom whilst you're letting people in the lobby. Everyone else can be working on these. You can also use images. So this was something that I did for geography for weekly and monthly reviews. It took them back to their learning from the prior year. But by putting it into Sway, it's an active activity that they can use. They can click on each picture and it takes them through the activity independently. You can also embed a form into Sway. So if we go back to that checking student understanding element, once they've completed their independent practice of watching the video, then they're able to use a form to check their understanding. You can also put PowerPoint type features into a Sway. So if you're thinking about the structure of your lessons, particularly with Rose and Shine, and once you've got onto that checker student understanding part, after this element, most of them will be able to move on independently. But if not, they can go back through and use the elements within Sway to support them. So Sway is great because again, they don't have to sign in and they don't have to have a Microsoft account. So I am aware that some people use Google Classroom for their pupils, and then they tend some people are then using Microsoft for staff, or you may have different systems in place, but by creating a Sway, they don't have to sign in. It's web and mobile friendly. And again, you've got the immersive reader. They can refer back to them for revision and access at any time. So that's something that I've particularly found useful is having a bank of Sways that then it just gives that extra interactive element to looking back through their work. You can upload documents. And the voice note just gives that extra clarity about what you're asking the pupils to do. It's visual and you can also use it for newsletters, sharing small steps and modelling and collating together learning resources for different subjects. So it might even be something that your pupils want to use as they're beginning to create their um, files for their revision. OK, another po uh, popular tool is Padlet and Padlet can be used to post questions, statements of problems and sharing materials, which again helps with that recaps and reviews. I don't tend to use is there a, I don't tend to use Padlet as such for checking understanding because that checking understanding element needs to be quite instant. I've also found with Padlet that it's just changed. So it used to be up to three walls at a time, but actually it's letting us at the moment create as many walls as we want. You can put a required approval feature for the comments. You can create your own personalized URL. And again, you don't have to log in, but going back to the DPIA, make sure that's in place. Pupils can again refer back to these for revision. And it works on all devices. And I've just seen there that someone put they love Padlet for reflection, self-assessment and collaboration. Exactly, that's why 
it definitely works better for me for that recap and review element as opposed to a check and understanding. Now, as you see here, other usage, you can use it for a book review, asking questions at the start of a unit, sharing, evaluating and peer reviewing each other's work and even interactive working walls. So something I've been working on in my spare time is looking at how we can move away from the standard working wall up on the display board that quite often they forget to look at by having a working wall in front of them that they can access on the Padlet at any moment in time. So it might be when they're at home doing their homework, when they're studying, if you're in the blended classroom or even within the lesson and they can go back to their prior work. They can look at the features. They can look at the vocabulary, the SPAG. It's all in one element and um, all in one place for them. So I'm just going to have a look and see if there's any other questions before I move on. Is there a Google version of Sway? I've not come across a Google version of Sway yet. Um, if anyone has found anything that uses Google, please do pop it in the box for anyone to help and please continue to put these questions through if you have any. So another popular tool is Flipgrid and Shobi. These are great because you can again share documents and quizzes as well as encouraging discussions and conversations. This links back more to the reviewing the learning and the checking understanding element. Three, they're code only invites to rooms. You can link Flipgrid and Shobi both to OneDrive and Google Drive, which is a lot easier for sharing resources. You can use videos. It promotes that discussion and encourages collaboration. And again, no logins required. It works on all devices, but I do recommend using these once you've got your DPIA in place on an app, particularly for iPad. But you can use these by having your own reflection of what they've learned each week to look back on. It's a bit like what was suggested earlier by Miss Taylor for Padlet. You can use Flipgrid and Shobi for this as well, particularly if we're thinking about um, the learning they've been doing over the last few weeks. It might be something you want the pupils to do when they return just to kind of do that recap and review of what you've been teaching whilst they've been um, not in school. And it's also great for sharing, evaluating and peer review and work. Now, free popular quiz platforms um, explain everything, works a bit as well like whiteboard.fi, then you've got quizzes and Quizlet. I'm not going to explore these as such, but when you receive my materials, I have put the links there for you. Another tool, and I haven't linked this to the Rosenshine feature as such, but I wanted to drop this one in, is the Dictate feature. And the Dictate feature is brilliant within Word, and it's in PowerPoint as well, if you're using the 365 platform online. Basically, what happens is, when you click Dictate, it then explain, oh, sorry, it then writes down exactly what the children and the pupils are saying. So for me, who's someone that's quite severely dyslexic, this tool is now going to really, really support me with getting ideas down. And it's something that I wish that I'd had in my classroom. So if children are beginning to use devices more in school and they're struggling with that written element, the dictate feature will then record this for them. Alongside that, the one that I keep using is Immersive Reader. With Immersive Reader, what happens is it can then read the text back to them. Now, along with this, you can change the background. So for me, I find reading easier if I've got a yellow background, a pale yellow background. Um, you can change the font size. So I've had children before in my class that have needed a much bigger font. And instead of having to print out lots and lots of pages because you've turned the font to 30. If you give it them to them, give it to them in a Word document or into the PowerPoint online and they have the immersive reader, you can then change it for them and they can control that as well. For EAL children, you can even change the language and the language will read it back to them in that language. I mean, I cannot check and see if any of these are correct, but you've got that tool and there's a whole multitude of languages available on there. And then there's even more use of technology that you can use to embed Rose and Shine principles. Screen mirroring, absolutely fantastic for hinge point questions. Using QR codes. So even if you create your form or your sway 
and then you turn it into QR codes and give that to them so they can work independently using your breakout rooms in Teams or your polls function in Teams. Editable quadrants. Editable, editable quadrants are brilliant for those monthly reviews, although this is a primary example, what you can do here, so I put history summer year, summer one, year three. If in year nine people, you could put, right, what did you learn in year eight at the start of year eight? In year eight in spring term, year eight summer term, and what did you learn in year nine autumn term and it means that you're able to then bring those back together and then something that has been trending on twitter and i'm more than happy to go through at another time if needs be share powerpoint or google slides for collaboration by creating a share powerpoint or your google slides and then sharing the link with your class you can then see exactly which child you can assign a page to each child and then within that they can then work independently you can then, in the middle of a lesson, go to their page. You can see exactly who is working on which page and when, and it becomes that instant feedback. I've also included in here for you some further reading. So everything that from today has come from me read, uh, reading these different elements. So now what I've done is that I've made that a bit of a shorter session so that we have got that opportunity for Q&A. And please, 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 if you've got any other examples to share to the Hive, do this now. And also start thinking to yourself, how can you start using these examples of technology to support Rose and Shine principles? I've mainly focused today on looking at daily reviews, monthly reviews and recaps and checking understanding. But there's many more ideas out there, that, particularly for the modelling, for that 80% success rate for truly making sure we've got the guided practice and the independent practice. And as I said, do check that the relevant DPIA has been completed before using any new software or signing up to websites in line with GDPR. So I've just seen on here now, we've got a few questions coming through. We've got, so if you're using Chrome Spiral Education is the similar version of Sway. So thank you for that. That's one that I'm going to look into. Um, Adobe Spark has other functions and does different things again. But as James has pointed out, make sure you've got that DPIA. Um, Jamboard can be used to show collaboration. Classpoint.app is a very good app. Nearpod, yes, Nearpod. I particularly like on the iPad and Vicky Chatterton was using uh, Nearpod on our webinar a couple of weeks ago. Google Classroom is a wonderful area to create classrooms and that works the same nib as our Teams platform. Okay, is there any other questions or anything anyone would like to add? Like the personalised reports that clickers can export? Yes, and I particularly like the personalised report. I think Plickers for me is one of those ones. It's a piece of technology that doesn't feel like you're just getting the pupils to get the laptops or the Chromebooks or their devices out. It means that actually you can <laughs> use the Plickers and it's a piece of paper and it's you controlling that element. Um, it's one thing that I do miss using and I'll be excited to use again. There are lots of people excited to use Plickers, so I'm glad that you've taken that one away. OK, what I am going to do is I am going to stay online if anyone does have any questions. As I mentioned at the start, this has been offered as part of the DfE EdTech Demonstrator program. And in fact, this webinar is the last in its series. However, once the program is launched again after Easter, there's going to be a whole array of support that we can offer. There will be new webinars, so please do keep in touch with us if you think that your school would require some support or you'd like to attend our webinars. So thank you everyone for attending. I am gonna stop sharing and I am gonna stop recording.